we've had our introduction to the sewing pattern and where we picked it up. And I'm hoping that you've got yours picked up now or you've at least got it on your shopping list of things to do. And I want you to know too that I found about 20 pattern sets or more at Goodwill. So you can try Goodwill's as well. Plus it was 10% off from military discount. So, um, so yeah, so I did pretty good on the ones I got at Goodwill. Like I said, these were $16.95, or excuse me, $15.95 each. So basically $16 each. All right, so I've got my reading glasses. I've got the pouch. So now let's discover what's inside. Inside we have our pattern pieces. First, we're gonna go over those instructions together, okay? Remember, this is Simplicity Pattern 1449. 1449. Now um, I chose to do D. I chose to do D. So if you didn't see the other videos, this is the pattern that we chose. I'm going to show you it on the front cover. I chose to do D, the most simplest one. So we can do this together step by step. I said I was going to go slow and I meant it. We're going to teach you how to sew today. Okay? We're going to teach you how to sew all week. Maybe even all month. However long it takes to teach you, we're going to teach you. Okay? So we're going to start with the directions. Now I've already read them from front to back thoroughly so that way I made sure that I didn't miss anything and I wanted to make sure that I taught you everything that you needed to know. But this is very simple, very basic uh, pattern for a toddler, uh, toddler or young child's dress. So let's get to it. Here's our instructions to dress D. All right, so you've got your pattern, and I've pre-read this, uh, so I could explain this to you. And I can get my glasses on. Here they are. Sorry, I polish them up too. <laughs> All right, so you ready? Have you opened your pattern, and have you got your simplicity pattern that you've chose, your simple pattern that you've chose, and hopefully it's the same one, the 14. 49 so we can go over it together and you can make one of these beautiful dresses now when i go over it you'll be able to do any of these dresses but let's start with this simple one so it comes with two pages okay there's going to be two pages here here on the first page so this is the page we call general directions okay and up here at the top, you'll see there's a phone number, there's a website, and there's email. And you can email the info right there. So this tells you about how the pattern symbols will be laid out. Some suggestions if you want to lengthen or shorten a dress or pant legs or what have you. That's here, adjustments if needed. This is why I was talking about symbols. Symbols uh, like the grain lines, when you get your patterns here, um, it's just simply tell you to go with the grain line or if the long fold is this way they want you to lay it this way but they'll show that to you on the layout there's actually a layout here I'm getting to next all right so we're gonna go over that in a minute we're gonna go over that actually twice because we're actually gonna be laying out the pattern uh, tomorrow before cutting we we'll talk about that and then after cutting then the next side this side of the page is actually sewing directions okay and this is just uh, the general directions for your gathering of your skirt. So then you find your dress number down here and you just follow the numbers for your dress and you stick with that section. And then you jump over, you can see everything that I've circled in orange here. That's the directions that I have to follow. This is why you must read your pattern ahead of time. Because once you get it all cut out, I mean, it's set. Down here is your cutting layouts. And you just find your dress number and again you can see my markings where I circled it and we're going to go over that in a minute as well and then over here is another language so I mark any sections that I don't need out so it's not confusing all right there's also a second page don't worry we're going to go over this but there's also a second page here and this is just basically the hat and then putting dress uh, E or F together uh, putting the the skirt this does if you have any problems with putting the skirt together or anything else you can always find it in the directions on another dress 
So you can come over here and see how to put that, that ruffle on. It shows you how to do it and how to pull the gathering stitches right here. So there's always another dress and another skirt to show, to show, you know, how to do it. So if you're confused, you can just find it on another pattern. All right, and you can see here where I have to jump all the way over to here, and this is mine. So what's nice about this pattern is, is I don't need anything else on this side of the page. So when I get this far, I can just fold it up and just there's mine and then everything else I can void out. It's not important for this particular dress. So that makes it nice. So those are just some tidbits that we're going to do along the way. So let's go ahead and let's get started about learning to read our pattern. So here we are. We're going to do dress D. And what I've done here on dress D is I just took a marker. And remember this will go through the pattern, this paper, so be careful. And I just made a little orange dot and then I wrote on here six pieces that I will need six pieces to make this dress okay so what I do at different dresses is I make when I'm making them I make a different color and a different shape like I might do a blue triangle or a purple square for the next dress I try and then I'll put that on the pattern pieces that I need now here are what the pattern pieces will look like each pattern piece has a number and that number so for example here's a sleeve number three sleeve number three on the pattern is used on dress a b c d e and f so we know we're going to need this one okay and we know we're going to have to cut two and it has it here in different languages but cut two so here's a sleeve pattern piece number three so we know we're going to need that piece. so with that you can see how that pattern piece number three right here I put an orange dot on it because we need it how do we know we need it because right underneath the pattern list uh, right underneath the pattern uh, shapes here with the numbers are the patterns what they are what they're for and they've got a letter next to them so for example there's number three a sleeve and there's a b c d e f next to it right there all right so this is what I do I know that I'm making D okay I know there's six pieces so I'm going to come over here and find the six pieces so I do that and by the way these pieces here are for the hat so right here I come down here and I know this number one piece which is up here is not for my dress because I'm dressed D so A B E F nope number two piece up here Let's see if you can zoom me out here now for just a minute now you've seen how to do it so the number two piece here, do I need it? Nope, because it's a blouse back for A, B, E, and F. Now here's piece three. Let's see if I need it. It's uh, piece three, sleeve, A, B, C, D. There it is, D. So I put the little orange dot next to it that matches the symbol that I'm using over here. Again, if I was using a purple square here, then I would do a purple square out here next to it. This way I can reuse the pattern. So every time I make a dress, I already know which piece to go get. And if I'm ever missing a piece, then I know what piece to look for. All right, so we know that we need that. So we need uh, the neck elastic guide, which is piece number four. That's right over here. We need that. That's an elastic guide for the, for the size of the elastic. And of course, you, you're going to make that according to the size of your child's shoulders and neck and arms. So... Um, we need five. We need this one right. Uh, let me look around here. We need five, which is another uh, sleeve elastic guide. And I don't even cut those out, actually. I actually leave those in, and I just go back for it later and measure my elastic against it. But I, but I mean, because it's just a guide. Um, don't need six. Don't need seven. Do need eight. Eight right here is a skirt front and the back. A B A B or the ruffle C and D. So that's what we need. We need eight. It's for this bottom ruffle right here. And then there's number nine. We need the front. So right here's nine. So now we found our six pieces. We count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And yes, that matches the six pieces that we need. One, two, three, four, and then five, six is the elastic uh, lengths. And like I said, I'm not even gonna cut four and five out. So since I'm not cutting four and five out, I'm going to put elastic next to this. That way I know that these here 
are elastic. So what I really need to cut out is three, the sleeve, the eight, which is the lower skirt, front and back. Let's see, lower skirt, front and back, or a CD, which is also the, used as the ruffle, and then nine, the front. So that's right here, okay? So I put an orange dot on all the pieces that were that in an orange triangle here that is everything and that's labeled for the hat so if I come back later and make the hat I know which ones to get all right so you've got your pattern pieces marked with your collar marker or collar pencil Collar pencil probably works best but because you'll see this actually goes through the paper see that actually goes through the paper all right so um and I don't want you getting confused, so I don't want you to use something that goes through the paper. But I do want you to be able to see something bright colored. So orange is a good color. You can use a highlighter if you have to, but again, that goes through the paper. You can make copies of this and use a heavier duty or paper if you want. All right, so let's recap here. Because we're learning to sew, we're going to recap. Got your dress number, dress D. Got your orange dot next to it. You wrote the number of pieces that you know are supposed to be with that dress number. You come over here and you find those six pieces. You come over here and you mark the six pieces here and make sure that you have the numbers right and you put your collared mark on it. If you make any additional pieces, then you mark those with a different symbol. So you don't cut them out yet or that you don't get them confused if you do cut them out. All right, so because two of these are elastic guide, we're only gonna be needing uh, four of these actual pieces. Now I'm telling you, this is simple. You're gonna be making this dress Okay, you're going to be making this dress. You got this. You got this. Okay, so then we're going to come over here and let's just discuss the general directions here real quick, okay? General directions are your basic knowledge of sewing that you're going to need to read these patterns. Let's talk about the patterns. Here, this is symbols. These are the symbols that are actually going to be here on the pattern uh, paper here, okay? And you're going to need to know that. See right here is a, um, is a notch. And you're going to need to know that. Some people notch. I'm just going to draw a picture and show you the notches. Some people when they cut these out, they will notch in or they will notch out. And if, it, if it's a small one and the line goes to here, then you know there's only one notch here. And if it's this one that's larger that sticks here, then you know it's only one notch. It is not a double notch. Now come over here and I'm going to show you a double notch. This is a double notch with two triangles together. And what I do is I don't cut in because you're getting too close to that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, which is a standard seam allowance. Be sure and look on your pattern because it may tell you right over here, it may tell you to use a different seam allowance. But a 5 8 seam allowance is standard okay unless it says otherwise it, you're gonna have a 5 8 inch seam allowance all right so that's about right in here let's just say it's about 5 8 of an inch right there so when you have a double notch like this what I like to do is some people will cut it out like this but I just cut it out like this okay and you're gonna be matching this up to this to the arm sleeve or to a side or a skirt or whatever so you need to know your notches so when I'm cutting this out, and let's say I'm doing the size, uh, let's say I'm doing the size two here, this one. Then I'll follow that, that around. I'll come around here, and instead of making two notches in and, and risking coming into my, um, especially around a curve like this, I could risk uh, not, you know, catching that and having a hole there. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to notch outwards to, make, to match my notch. And I'm just going to make it a double size notch. If it was a single size notch, then uh, let's find a single size notch over here. Then I would take right across from it and I would just do a single notch like that. I always notch out instead of in. It's easier for me to see. Um, it looks better. I know they're there and I don't risk cutting in here. I don't risk cutting right in here in case I get close. See how that would go across my um, my sewing line and that would be a tear or a later a a hole in your shirt or your armpit so this just it's fine this is never seen anyway because it's inside the seam allowance all right so I hope that made sense
lecture that discusses notches, all right? Now we have these circles, which is called dots. Dots, you don't cut, you don't do anything with dots. See if I can find one here on a pattern for you. Pattern right here. Let's assume it has a circle. Let's say the circle's right here. And let's say there's a circle here and a circle here. Let's say it could just be that these, if they go like this and you see a line like this, then it may say buttons, button placement, okay? So it might be the button placements. Or if you see another circle, let's say, where a sleeve or something else goes, it might just be a matchup later. Circles, what you want to do is mark with chalk. Don't ever mark it, your fabric with a marker. You can't get that out. So we use chalk, or I can see it, button placement, button placement, button placement. And then I would do that, I'd flip it over, and it had the same circles on the other side, button placement, button placement, button placement or grommets, whatever. So that's what the circles tell us, okay? So when you see the circle, and I know it's hard to see, then, um, or even the, like the little dot circles there, those are called dots. And those dots, well, you just learned, they mean there's a placement there of some sort. There's grommets, there's, if it's a buttonhole or a buttonhole goes somewhere, you may see the buttonhole uh, look right there. You may see something like that, like a zigzag stitch over a line. So all patterns are a little bit different from different companies, but I think it's very clear what they mean by it. And so the most confusing thing is usually the dots. The dots are not something you cut out. You do not put scissors to a dot unless it tells you to. The dots are just locations where you either might stick, like two neck collars might meet to a front of a pattern. It might just, they might say match the dots just to help to give you a stop location of where that collar sits on a blouse maybe, or it might be the placement of the buttons. So just mark the dots with chalk and make sure not to wipe it back off. And if that happens, just break out your pattern back on and re-chalk it, re-chalk the location. It's easy to put the pattern back on. All right, so on piece number one, the, um, the toddler bodice here, the top one that has a bodice. If you're making that, this one, where the one that had the buttons, then, um, which is this one right here that has a bodice, then um, you see here, you see right here's a double arrow line. And what that means is that's a center fold. So you're gonna put that on the fold of the fabric on the pattern. So when you're laying out your pattern and they tell you how to lay out your pattern, they'll tell you to put it on a fold. So see the word fold and the word fold? They're telling you how to fold your fabric this way and this way. And then your pattern piece itself, when you find that pattern number that's on that picture, then you'll see the arrows here, which double arrows, which means fold line. That means to put that right on your fold. Now, if the pattern is, let me zoom in here so you can see this. If the pattern is clear, it's right side up. If the pattern is, has a little bit of a gray or a gray stripe line, it means that it is wrong side down. So you're gonna cut two here. You're gonna cut, uh, you're gonna cut two of it on the right side up. And here, you're gonna turn the pattern over and cut two with the pattern down. Uh, so this is pattern number one and pattern number two. But pattern number one gets turned over the other direction. And, and the same thing here. This is a little bit bigger. You can see it better. Pattern three here, they basically, you can see where this design is actually here now. They just took this one and flipped it over. Put this end up here on this end and gave it a flip. So now the pattern is upside down. So the printed side is down. And you'll know that because it's shaded in gray. All right, that's an important thing to learn when you're laying it out. And like I said, we're gonna lay this out together. We're gonna do it together. So we're gonna go over that again. We're gonna make sure that we follow our dress size right here like this. And some will have like a little skinny dotted line, a solid line, a line, dot, dash, line. Usually you can just follow. If it's gonna be a difficult pattern, you can just follow your, your, your dotted line or your dot, dash, dot and help get yourself around these lines and come back out where you're supposed to be. 
but what they do here is they actually put a number here and they tell you what line you're supposed to stay on. Most people are right-handed and they'll cut from this direction. And what most people don't know about patterns is they put it so right-handed people can follow their lines. Left-handed people, it's hard, but they still cut in this direction. So you'll notice that a lot of people don't realize that. But yeah, they do that. So that will help you stay in the flow. So let's say you're here and you're cutting pattern here. So you follow this line around, cut your notch in with your scissors, follow that around, that becomes the same as all the other numbers. And then instead of coming all the way out to here, you follow the line down this way, putting in your uh, notch with your scissors, and then you coming around. This is why you can see clearly why we, you have to lightly on warm, you want to iron these out when you, uh, when you first cut them out. You can see why, because this can change. I mean, this is almost a eight to a quarter of an inch change just by having it doubled up like this. And you come around here and follow that in, okay? So that's how you cut out a pattern. Okay, center front or back of garment. This is line, dot, line, dot, line, dot, line. So let me show this to you on a pattern. All right, so here is a sample of a center line. A center line does not go on a fold line unless they tell you to. This is just a center front and a center back. So you, so this piece right here, number 12, now when you cut these out, this is what makes the hat. This is just the center line and this means they want you to put this on the fabric. Okay? So, grain line, place on straight grain of fabric parallel to the salvage edge, okay? Now we learned what this was, this right here, okay? This is our grain, the direction of the grain of the fabric. So what, if our fold is this direction, this is the direction that they want your uh, pattern piece to lay on the pattern. Unless otherwise noted, then this runs along the fold line. So if your fabric uh, they have your fabric, 45 inch fabric, folded in half. And what you do with a tape measure is you measure from here to the edge of your fabric to here to the edge of your fabric. Not, because this will be cut out. So this won't be, this won't be here. Okay. So this curves up. So you need to make sure that this is placed square with the running line and the grain of your fabric. Okay. We need it to run that 45 degree angle. So, um, so this will run what they call with the grain or with the length of the fabric. Now, if there's a pattern to your fabric, then you might have to adjust this, but this normally is always the same, okay? Just like 5 eighths of an inch is always an undenoted uh, seam allowance. So that's what that means. And I'm going to show you how to pin your pattern to your fabric. So we're going to learn that. But right now, we're just learning the symbols and what they mean before we get started, okay? We need to know that. And by the way, LMS, large, medium, and small. So this tells you um, the size of hat you can make. But we're gonna get more advanced and we're gonna be discussing things like zippers and things like that later on. Right now, we just want you to sew a project and be proud of yourself because we're gonna finish this together. You'll see here, for example, this is the one that we're going to be using. Let me zoom in here. This is dress D. I've got my orange dot that shows where I'm going to be starting. Uh, my fabric is 40, uh, 44 to 45 inches um, for C and D. This right here is going to be our setup. So you see where it says fold here and it says fold here. Well, we're going to take that 45 degree fabric and unfold it. And then we're going to fold it from bottom to bottom and top towards bottom. So you can see the fold line. I'm going to fold it this way and this way. Then we're going to put our pattern pieces. They show you like these little indents right here. That's just showing you the arrow that you just learned about that says fold and fold. So that goes on a fold. This goes on a fold. And then when you open this up, you'll have a front. You have a single back and a single front. And then these right sides will go together and then we'll be sewing the sides to those together and then you'll already have the body done. So two stitches, you're gonna have the body to the dress done in just two, two rounds on the machine. That's how easy this is gonna be, okay? 
I, I told you I was going to pick an easy one for you. All right, and let me get this out of the shadow here. Let me spread it down. Sometimes I even iron my paper here. Cause see, see how wrinkled it is? Sometimes I just put a warm iron across the paper as well. Okay, so here's the same thing. We're going to take our part three. We're going to lay it on. But see right here where it says fold? That's important because this is the fold of our fabric. This is the fold of our fabric right here. And the fold of that fabric is the hard, is the hard dotted line. So you see kind of like an angle here. They're showing you that this folds. I put an arrow here to show you that it folds this way. And it actually only folds to here. Not there. Let me get rid of that. All right. It folds to here. And then these two, dot, these two lines here with arrows on them means that these are fold line pattern pieces. And because this isn't shaded gray, then piece number eight is going to be, which is the, um, the bottom ruffle of the dress. And these two go right sides up. It's not shaded gray, so right sides up. And you need to cut two on the fold. You got to cut two. So, um, and that's enough that when we sew it end to end and we gather this, that it will fit the bottom of the dress. We'll pull those gathering threads and make it meet up the bottom of the dress. Now, number three is the um, number three is the sleeves, and so on the sleeves here, this is shaded gray. This tells me that we cut one sleeve right side up on a single layer of fabric. It's not doubled because the other one we don't need two. Obviously, we don't need two because they're making us flip it over for the other sleeve. I mean, we don't have four sleeves on the dress. We only have two sleeves on the dress. So this one, we turn the pattern upside down and we cut out another one. Now, this, this right here does not have lines in it like this. So when it's just clear like this, it means that is right side, right sides, um, yeah, right side up. So... So when it's clear, right side up. When it's shaded or striped, right sides down. Okay? And there's several. There's several. All the different dresses have a little bit different way of laying it out, but even the hat has some that get flipped. Okay? So, so let's go back to our general directions. And you need to know this because once you start cutting out your pattern and once you start sewing, you need to know what you're seeing there. All right. So we've learned the grain line. We've learned place solid line on fold of fabric. We learned what the double arrows were. We've learned what the dotted, dotted line is. That's the center front or back of a garment. Or, you know, garment meaning a piece of the garment. Uh, we learned what notches is, single or double, and how to cut them out. We learned the dots are marking placements of like buttons or places like the tips of like the collar of your shirt will go and touch a it will touch that and that way you don't have a collar that's off you know one side or the other examples there okay now a solid line a heavy solid line is a cutting line i think that's self-evident so let's look back here at the pattern again you can see this right here that's a thick line that's a cutting line okay now the skinny lines here and i showed you right here right here are lengthened or shortened lines and you'll see those like on a pair of pants. If you want, if you're a tall person or if you're short, then they'll show you how to make the pants long or how to make the pants shorter. Okay. And that's what these lines right here are. Cause that's the location on the pattern material piece that you want to lengthen or shorten. So you lengthen and shorten the pattern and then you cut out your material. All right, next up is cutting and marking. Before cutting, press pattern pieces with a warm, dry iron. Make sure you have no water in the iron because you can really mess this up. And like I said, sometimes I'll even run the warm iron over this to kind of flatten it out. So press pattern pieces with a warm, dry iron. Pre-shrink fabric by pre-washing washables or steam pressing non-washables. Well, obviously, you're not going to make your baby dress out of a non-washable fabric. So let's just shh, get rid of that. <laughs> These are kind of standard instructions, but um, we're going to make it out of bare fur. <laughs> you know, let's, not, let's not do that. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to pre-shrink the fabric. Because if you, if you don't, 
you'll have issues later. So take your fa fabric down and this is what I do. I actually don't pre-wash it that way. I actually have a dryer that has a mist setting in it. I throw the fabric in for 10 minutes and it mists it, gets it wet, and then dries it and that actually pre-shrinks it. It actually does a great job. And it comes out all nice and um, pressed and looking really good. All right, so circle your cutting layout. We already did that, didn't we? We circled our cutting layout. Now I'm gonna back, back way back out here for just a second. These are your cutting layouts, okay? This is dress A and B layouts. This is for 44 to 45 inch wide fabric or 58 um, to 60 inch wide fabric with or without, if it says with a nap, everywhere and it never says without a nap then it's for both all right here's mine dress c and d so here I, I circled the d so i could see it and then i made notes on mine so this is the only section that i need i don't need anything else here unless i'm doing the hat i don't need anything else here and here's the hat layout right there so you just find your dress number that you're making and then that is your section so let's go ahead and let's circle our section this is what they're telling you to do. Find your dress section. Because when you're cutting out and laying out your pattern, you can accidentally go over here and look at a similar layout and get it wrong. So trust me, you wanna mark it clearly. Zoom me back in now. Okay, so you circled your cutting layout. Check, check, check. I check them off as I go. Um, pin pattern to fabric as shown in cutting layouts. So when you get this all cut out like we discussed, you know, all of your patterns cut out like we discussed, and we're going to do that together in a little while here, then you're going to want to pin your pattern to the fabric as shown on the cutting layout directions that I just showed you. Okay, again, we're going to do that together. For double thickness, fold fabric with right sides together. So if they show you a fold, you'll want to fold right sides together. So that's, that's for double thickness. So check, we understand that. For single thickness, place fabric right side up. So if there's no fold and they just want you to lay out a piece of fabric, lay it right side up. The best side of the fabric goes up. Check, we get it. All right, for pile, shaded, or one-way design fabric like stripes, Use with nap layouts. Well, all these layouts cover with nap or without. So check, we're fine. So here you wanna transfer, this is after, after cutting means after you've cut out your pattern, after you've pinned your pattern to the fabric, folded however up, right, down, made all your cutouts, and you've cut it all out here, and you've got your fabric and everything's ready to go, and you're gonna keep your pattern pinned to your fabric until you need it, until, you, until they tell you to take it off. So you'll transfer markings to the wrong side of fabric before removing the pattern. Okay, and we discussed that with the circles and any marks that you may need. By the way, the center, the center dotted line here that we discussed right here, the center dotted line, you'll want to mark that as well. That's one of the things you do mark. Any triangles that are inside, circles, squares, or dotted lines on the inside, you do want to mark with a chalk line. You do not want to use the same chalk dust that you put in a chalk line for construction either. It's not the same thing. You think it is, but the dye is totally different and you can totally ruin your out, your, your clothes. So be sure and use sewing chalk dust, okay? Um, and yes, I have actually made my own using sidewalk chalk and that works. I've actually had to make my own in sidewalk chalk. I used blue, <laughs> light blue sidewalk chalk. So. That's a little tip for you there, but no one else out there maybe has tried. Hey, it worked. Okay, so use a pen and chalk method or dressmaker's tracing paper and wheel. We already discussed that little wheel, okay, with the tracing paper and making those little dots on there by putting the um, printed side down and it just leaves copy paper marks there. But, but the sewing paper is washable. Uh, pins, you don't want to sew over pins on your machines. You can break needles doing that. And that's another tip for you. Don't sew over your pins. All right, so there you go. That's our general directions. Now that wasn't so bad. Let's pull you up here and see how big that page was. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, was it? I mean, you learned, look what you learned today. 
I mean, you learn how to, um, uh, you learned what dress you were going to make. You learned the pattern piece numbers and how they coincide with the actual pattern numbers and how to find what patterns you need by looking at the letters next to the pattern. You learned your pattern symbols that are on the patterns and on directions. Um, you learned how to lengthen and shorten a pattern. You've learned how to mark before and after, you know, how you mark before and after your cuttings and what to do. Um, there's a special, you'll usually want to come over here and you'll see, I guess I should note this, there's a star and what I like to call a snowflake. I don't know what that's called. It's called snowflake. But, um, but you'll want to read this. This means special cutting notes and you'll just want to read this. Like if they're a pattern that hangs over a fold or anything like that. But there's nothing of this in this specific uh, pattern. So we didn't need that. I pre-read that for you. All right, and then here they'll give you some sewing tips. Right underneath the pattern, they'll give you some sewing tips. So sew garment following sewing directions. Okay, this is where you want to start right here. Pin or machine-based seams matching notches. So you you want to pin it or machine base it. I always pin it. Um, stitch five eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters seam allowance unless otherwise stated it'll be stated usually right here on the pattern pieces uh, press uh, seams open so press your seams once you get them made press your seams open and then um, unless otherwise indicated uh, clipping when necessary so the seams will fit so let me show you this this is important when you're coming around, and this right here would be a good one. Let's find this hat piece here again. Let's say you're making the, this hat here. Then usually on a curve, and when you got this five inch seam allowance, you'll usually go through and you'll probably, you'll cut, you'll actually make a notch in towards the seam. Do not cut through the seam. Some sewing scissors are very, very sharp. I would also make an honorable mention here that you do not use your fabric scissors for cutting paper. Use your everyday fa uh, paper scissors to cut this out. You can dull your fabric scissors doing that. You don't want to do that. So two different pairs of scissors. Uh, one will be for paper scissors and one for fabric scissors. Okay. Never, never the two shall meet, right? <laughs> um, let me back back off here. So that's, I mean, you've learned everything basically there is to learn. Okay, right here where they talk about notching on the curve. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom you in so you can see this better. I'm hoping you can see this. So when you sew, this is the sewing line here. This little number looking stuff here, that is interfacing. Uh, the hat calls for interfacing, so that's why they've put this on here. See the shape of the hat here. They want you to cut the points off. After you sew it on and the interfacing on, they want you to cut the points off. Um, they want you, this means that they want you to cut the different layers. If you got multiple layers together like you will on that hat, they want you to cut down each layer closer and closer to the seam line. So short, really short, and shortest you can get up against the seam line. So when you put your cross grain ribbon on, you can fold that and cover that up a lot easier. And you don't have all this thick stuff going across the baby's head. Because right here, let's say this right here is the hat, okay? And then you're looking in here and you got a seam in here. You don't want this really thick seam up in here. Uh, you want this to fit the baby's head, okay? You want this to fit the baby's head. We'll put a little pom-pom up there. So that's what they're talking about right here, where you're going to have to really cut through it. So only if you're making the hat. To make the hat fit, you got to cut those peaks off. And then this just means interfacing. And you fused it on with an iron. You sewed it on, however you're going to do it. And then on a curve, they want you to take and notch it. But just never notch through the actual 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, never notch past the thread or you'll cut the thread and you'll cause it to be a hole. And trust me, it's really hard to go over and sew back over that and make that so it never tears in the future. So just be careful when you're notching when they tell you to notch. I hope this has all made sense. I mean, this is it. I mean, I know there was a lot to go over and we went over the directions together, but this actually, the more you sew, the easier this gets, the more you're just going to know what to do. You got this.